journey through the stories that define the artists playing Bonnaroo. Who are they? What are they? What will you see? The what? Which bands? This year, that matter. Yay. With Brad Steiner and Barry Corner. A podcast for Bonnaroovians by Bonnaroovians. Welcome to the what? I'm Brad. That's Barry. It's Lord Taco. Around the room. Uh, big day. Short show today. Uh, we wanted to sp- uh, pop on and get uh, get into some news that we have, some news that uh, others have had, uh, some questions that I have for our uh, local expert, our resident uh, writer in Barry Quarter. Um, But first, uh, hi guys. Hi, gentlemen. Hey. Hey. I had had to smile when you said going to be a short one. (laughs) Every time we do that, it's (laughs) like the longest one ever. (laughs) I know, but I kind of just thought you were going with the dick joke. (laughs) I, uh... Thought you were going to get dirty there for a second, Barry. I leave that to you. I leave the smut to you. The smut to you. The smut? (laughs) Yeah, I've got the smut. You've got the hooping and the holler. The hooping and the holler. Welcome back, Taco. We uh, we missed you last week during the um, uh, booking episode. I missed you, but it was a good episode. Yeah, it was actually uh, really informative. In fact, uh, industry people have even uh, reached out to me to talk about it. And, um, you know, when, when I'm teaching... You know, the head of a label, a few things about something like this. That's pretty impressive. I actually like that nice, a lot. Nice. Um, so let's start with a couple of things. Uh, let's start with some news. I'm gonna get right news. to it. You have news? I've got news. I have news. Okay. Well, right. who's, who wants to start with their news? Let's let Russ go. He's excited. I love this. We don't see Russ excited very often. Uh, other than the when news he gets is, that PBR. Well, the news is about PBR. PBR oh, right. follows exactly 69 people on Twitter. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I became number 69. I am wow. PBR's this is, 69th this is follow. The biggest, this is the biggest day in the yes. history of podcasting. I swear to God, there is not a uh, <laughs> higher honor in Lord Taco's life than being the 69th follow of PBR, which used to be uh, owned, that, that record was essentially owned by John Cena there for a while, wasn't it? What That's happened right. to John yeah. Cena? Did they unfollow the, the Cena? They uh, lost a follower. Maybe somebody um, deleted their account or something, but it came to their attention that they were only following 68 people, and they fixed the issue by following me. Yeah, but Uh, what happens when another person drops out? Then you become 68, and a whole other 69 shows up. I only need need it this one time. This is all I need. (laughs) He is such a simple guy. I can't take it away now. Couldn't have yeah. picked I've got the screenshots. <laughs> You've got hats and T-shirts printed up. <laughs> yeah. I, oh, my God. Oh, Taco. I know you're not a sports guy, but we need to get you a PBR football jersey with the number 69. That would be awesome. Is, can we do that? Yes, we can. Yes. I'm that's, sure that's we can a good do idea. that. Okay. Okay. PBR, dear PBR, send us PBR. a football jersey with Lord Taco's name on the back and number 69. We beg of you. And he will wear it Oh, on that would the be show. amazing. Proud. I'll wear it every day. I'll sleep in it. I'll have shower in it. in it. Yeah, have everything in he it. does in life will be that stupid jersey on. I'll never take it off. I That's a, it. a really big deal. I'm very proud of you. It's a very big day for you know our, our pride and joy, Lord Taco. There's a lot of beers. That's my big news. A lot of beers in the earned. A lot of beers. What I love about that. what I love about Lord Taco's uh, love affair with PBR is that when he goes on that you know what is that app where you check in all the beers taco untapped Untapped, right okay yeah so it's for beer nerds for beer snobs and it's for the guys that love the craft beer who want to show off all of the you know neato craft beer they're drinking around the country right well uh you check in a different beer every time you have it and you win awards and people follow you and they, they they gawk at your amazing beer palette well, Lord Taco has checked in how many beers since you've been on Untapped? How many beers have you checked in? 369 and times every single, for one beer. And every, every single, single one is a PBR. Is PBR. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> <laughs> he literally checked in the same beer every time he has it. I, the man I always give it four stars. Day. I was going to ask if the scores fluctuate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, four out of five, five you know. I? It's pretty good. Yeah. They can do better. They can still do better. <laughs> right, we're getting into ham territory now. We keep going with that. It's um, so all funny, right, let's though. let's uh, go with this. Uh, I'll start with with my uh, with my Domino's reference that I I made a couple of weeks ago. So I can uh, say this now because I, I feel as though I've gotten enough people to uh, tell me this. But the Domino that I was referring to is not the festival. Any of the festivals that have announced over the past couple of weeks, and it has not was not uh, about the. Um, it's situation on the farm. 
which we'll get into here in a little bit, the uh, shows that they're doing uh, over two weekends coming up on, uh, I guess, Bonnaroo Farm. The Bonnaroo so, Farm. Um, neither one of those are the thing. It's Lollapalooza. Lollapalooza is going to announce in the next three weeks. And what is crazy about Lollapalooza is that they're doing it in the last week of July. And it is the first, it's going to be the, it's going to, not only is it, you know, the biggest festival, it'll be the biggest piece of news that we've had in all of this pandemic. We're going to, they're going to have an 80,000 person festival in Chicago. Apparently the city is on board. They've gotten all the approvals. It's not going to be uh, capped, not capped, but it's not going to be, you know, have, have some sort of like, you know, half, ca- half capacity. No, it's going to be a full on Lala Palooza. So now, granted, all of this could, you know, change drastically. I think that, that you know, asterisk is every, in everything we say, especially when it comes to uh, something I said a couple of weeks ago in that uh, I was told straight up that Tame Impala was an out for Bonnaroo. I don't think that's true anymore. I, I will go back and even change my own uh, piece of news from a few weeks ago in that when Tame Impala essentially said no to coming to America, they've even changed their mind. Look at what happened with the, the lineup that dropped in Las Vegas the other day. So now I'm totally um, off this idea that Tame Impala is out. Um, the other thing that I found out from numerous people, Bonner is going to announce too. Yep. And Bonner is going to announce in the next 10 days. Now, I know that, um, what's his name? The, the Ham's guys, uh, the, the, the father and son of Ham, right? Parker and his son, Jake. Johnny Ham and Doug Ham, Johnny right? Ham. Yeah. yeah. So th- I know that they had some sort of random 323 day. That may be it. Uh, I give them all the credit in the world. If that's what they meant by that weird tweet that they put out one day that just said 323, then they nailed it because it, everything's setting up for that to be actually true. Um, from, the, from the multiple people that told me that Bonnaroo is going to announce not just in the next two weeks, but maybe in the next 10 days. Um, with all that being said, uh, I know Brittany is a go. Um, I know that the, the lineup is at least 60% of what it was. Um, I think that Tame is, is a go. That's, that's just an opinion at this point. And then finally, um, I'm not going to go out and say the other band that I know is an add to the lineup, uh, but if you've listened to this podcast at any point, it is one of Barry Corder's favorite bands in the world that it was absolutely confirmed um, to me to be a Bonnaroo. So, I think, that's, I think that covers essentially what I needed to, to clarify. Did I miss anything, Barry? Do you think I missed anything? No, I can't think of anything other than I just wanted, to, as we talked yesterday, stress the point, and you said it, that we've heard from multiple people. Because as we've said on here, you and I try to, you know, uh, go get the answers. We try to go to the sources and, and get the, the answers, but we also don't try to burn bridges with those sources. So if you hear it from one person or I hear it from one person, that isn't enough. Yeah, one person's not enough. It's just not, not enough. Not enough, and especially if it, you know, if, even if it looks like it could be traced back, uh, which is something we just have to deal with, you know, I won't do it. I know well, you won't do it because we don't want to burn bridges because we want to be doing this for a while. Well, you, you are a far different entity than I am. I mean, you are a professional newspaper reporter i'm just a guy that tells fart jokes on the radio um so you know when i have one person tell me something i think that leads to informed speculation and uh, informed opinions um but when i get multiple people in completely different aspects of this industry tell me the same thing then i'm just you know at that point AI, hey, I'm just, I'm going to share it. <laughs> so no. i would almost be <laughs> derelict of duty if i didn't yeah. um so uh, I feel like there's something else that uh, was on the list, but I don't necessarily remember. Um, I'll be honest with you, I'm a little, you know, I'm kvetching a little bit because of Lord Taco's 69th. Um, you know. <laughs> with that being said, uh, is there anything I'm missing? I feel like I'm, I've missed something. I, I feel not, like there's a piece in this that I've I've sort of s- let slip by. Not that I can think of that 
was on your list. I've got my list in front of me, and I'm sure mm-hmm. we'll all come back to it. Uh, there's right. a lot happening in Manchester and with the farm, but as far as announcements, I've heard the same thing you did, uh, not about Lollapalooza, but that Bonnaroo is soon, very mm-hmm. soon, uh, for multiple people. I have not heard performers and stuff like that like you have. Um, so, But um, there was a lot that came out yesterday that uh, I didn't, I mean, yeah. some of it I knew we knew was coming. Some of it uh, surprised me. Some of it, the way it was announced, surprised me. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot yeah, of it just let, sort of slipped under that yeah. I got confirmed that we're going to talk about here in a minute. Yeah, let's get to that here in a, in a second. Um, but reaction, if you have any, to um, not just you know this Bonnaroo thing actually happening, but uh, Lollapalooza at the end of July. I mean, talk about brave. Yeah. Really, really brave. Uh, and look, I said it to you a couple of weeks ago. You know, we know the the ways in which this country operates. We know the how Americans operate. If we get 200 million people vaccinated, do you think that the you know majority of Americans are going to care about the next hundred million? <laughs> you know, I hate to be this cynical about right. it, but do you think that they're going to say, you know what, we'll hold out, we'll keep everything closed until you guys can can do? It. And, and the other thing too that's, that's odd is, you know, I. I don't think, based on everything that I've heard, they're not going to be asking for vaccination cards either. Yeah. Um, so, uh, with all that being said, I, I found it to be both surprising and not surprising. I think I was more surprised that they're holding on to the date and they're going to um, go forward with their you know, original sort of slot that they always find themselves in, Lollapalooza does, in that first weekend of August, that you know, last weekend of July. But still, at the same time, you know, it's it's still a little surprising. It's surprising to say anything like this anymore, to be honest with you. No, absolutely. And the the thing that I keep hearing is there are a lot of events that are booking dates. And in some cases, it's simply to hold the date. They don't want anybody else to get it should they be able to get it. I'm not saying that's the case with Lollapalooza, but I know of other festivals that are. Uh, Oh, no, their, their lineup's done. Uh, yeah. Lala Lime season, and one name on there is actually pretty surprising. Um, I don't really want to get into yeah. it, uh, but it's uh, it, it's it's a full fledged Lollapalooza. Right, and so the interesting thing is everything that you and I, uh, uh, the three of us, have been talking about for a year, literally a year, uh, especially the last seven eight months, is still in play. Just like you said, uh, the vaccine, you know, the paperwork, are you going to have to have it? Infrastructure. All those things are still in play, and to get get that all moving would be really impressive. Mm-hmm. Um, in the case yeah. of Bonnaroo, I've asked that question. Especially Bonnaroo. And quite honestly, nobody that I've talked to has an answer. Yeah. But um, they're planning on doing it Labor Day weekend in September. Mm-hmm. Um, how that works, I don't know. Um, you asked a great question Yesterday, when this announcement came out that we're going to get into, uh, Russ especially was asking about camping. You know, why no camping? Because camping is safe. And as you pointed out, tell you have to go to the porta potty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So there's been a bunch of these sort of outdoor pod like shows that have been popping up around the country. And, you know, for the most part, you know, as a guy who ate crow for hating the drive in shows and ended up liking, you know, the one that I went to. Um, you know, these pod things, and I'm going to say the same thing I said about the drive-in show. These pod shows sound terrible. Mm. I mean, they sound just legit. Um, you're just putting up a square peg in a round hole. Uh, now, maybe they work, and maybe I'll feel the same way after I went to the drive-in show as a total, feeling like a total fool. But to me, I don't really want to, God love them for trying something, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but I don't want to go to which is now called the Bonnaroo Farm, yep. and um, drive there, not just drive there, but have to stay in a hotel in Manchester. Love the nightlife in Manchester, by the way. A lot of things to do <laughs> late night after Bonnaroo, uh, after a what show um, yeah. event. But I don't think I want to do that, and, and it's because of the lack of camping. And I think that you nailed it. There's no possible way that they could allow camping, first, for the security reasons. Right. Uh, they don't the, – the, the manpower would be just a, just too much. They'd have to open up the facilities again. Um, and, you know, 
it's really it's not really recommended based on our conversation with the bookers last week. Right, and and just you know, how do you keep people from visiting between campsites and all that? So it's logistically, it's it's not possible. Mm-hmm. And I was I was thinking along your way of thinking that I just do I want to drive that hour hour and ten minutes Mm -hmm. and then I thought you know the caverns for people who don't live around here there's a cave 20 minutes from the Manchester site that's unbelievable and they had uh, need to breathe last weekend I think they had three sold out shows they've got uh, uh, somebody there this weekend and I mean they've got somebody to breathe or was it head in the heart no it was need to breathe okay last weekend yeah so, with that being said, the um, what, why, what happened to Great Stage Park? What happened to Great Stages Park? And I, why is it all of a sudden called bon, the Bonnaroo Farm? The Bonnaroo Farm. That is official. It has been changed. Um, I, don't, I didn't get this directly from anybody official, but I think it's the reality is we all either call it the farm or Bonnaroo. Mm-hmm. Nobody calls it Great Stage Park. And they just said it's a bad name. Well, you know, it. It, well, I know, but it tells me that that idea of doing multiple festivals through the years, not going to happen anymore. Because the reason why they called it Great Stages Park is because they didn't want to brand it Bonnaroo so that they could use it for other events throughout the year. Yeah. So now that they're owning the Bonnaroo farm, I think that that whole, let's do some events throughout the year, ain't going to happen anymore. Well, that's what this is. It's exactly what this concert series I know is. That it, I know that, but this is under the Bonnaroo umbrella, it's where an Exit 311 fest was not. Which, so name me the other events that have happened at Great Stage I, Park. No, no, I know that. But, that, but do you remember they always said, they kept saying over yeah, and over and over, it. when we buy the property, they yeah. didn't say this, but people would say when they buy the property, then you're going to have events throughout the year. I'll have a second Bonnaroo. It'll be a country Bonnaroo. And no. Yeah, but the only people who ever called it Great Stage Park are the people who write the news releases and me who have to rewrite it and put it in the paper. Everyone else calls it either the farm or Bonnaroo. Okay. So, you know, my, my sort of quibble, if I, if I will, is the way that just sort of snuck it in there. You know, when it came out yesterday, there's, no, there's not been an announcement that they've changed it, rebranded it. Mm-hmm. That was a little strange. Yeah. Um, I thought the whole thing was strange yesterday. I thought the the rollout, the um, the the way it was, uh, the reason I think it was strange is probably because it wasn't done by the people who normally do it. Uh, people who normally do it are furloughed and not around anymore. Yeah. So that's my that's bet. Um, but y- the people that are mostly behind this this side event that's happening with the Avett brothers, Billy Strings, and Jack Pardo, I don't know who the other guy is. Pardo, John. Okay, Pardo. yeah. It, who who is who's actually running this? Who actually put this together? So that was I had three questions, it, and I I knew Live Nation was involved. So my question was, how is Live Nation involved? Uh, did the name officially change? And then um, um, what was the third one? Oh, the point of it, I guess. And uh, so the name did change. It's now the Bonnaroo Farm. It is C3 Presents and AC Entertainment are producing it which are both subsidiaries of Live Nation, as we know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it's, it's part of that. This is their effort to, to use the farm more than, more than once, you know, more than just for the big festival. Uh, I'm betting. Now, C3 has, has uh, turned into an operation that is more fluid these days than um, a Live Nation is, mainly because they, they you know, kept a lot of their employees employed frankly. So my bet is, and I'm just guessing here, believe me, this is not informed in any way, but my bet is C3 did most of this, and uh, because AC doesn't really have any employees right now, um, you didn't get the normal sort of, you know, touches that you would have normally gotten from a Bonnaroo-like thing, uh, because AC usually does that kind of stuff. You know, C3 is the ones, you know, making the festival happen. They're the ones that are booking, you know, artists and and helping with you know costs and um finding the stage hands and buying you know the equipment etc ac's just you know sort of you know operating it and you know doing the press releases and making it feel the way that we all know that it feels so without those people doing that and without those people helping i highly doubt that you're going to get a bonnaroo level you know, 
press release, if you will. Well, and, and, you know, it sort of occurred to me after thinking about it all afternoon is you, the three of us geek out over this kind of stuff. I mean, we're, mm-hmm. we're going to parse every word and every nuance and what does this yeah. mean and what does that mean? And that's true. To your point, you know, maybe they don't. Um, yeah, that's true. But, you know, calling it the Bonnaroo Farm and putting that on, on the label like they did, I mean, that's, we all went right to that, right? I mean, what? What does that mean? So, you know, um, yeah. so I don't, you know, I, I think you're exactly right. Um, and I think you, I know you're right about like the AC um, people and the normal people. They were involved, but not in the, at the normal level that they are. Okay. I want it to be successful. I just, I don't know how it's going to be. The ticket price is quite high. And when you break it up into the, the pod, so the pod can have how many people in it? Four. Four. Okay, four. So take that yeah, top price, which is $250 when it's all said and done, divide it by four. That's a pricey trip to Manchester, Tennessee. Yeah, it's still a good and, price. And by the way, you know, are you staying there? I mean, I like Manchester. But um, you, you're hanging out the Holiday Inn? If, if camping wasn't acceptable based on the cdc do you really think all those people who would have been camping are not going to be you know holed up in the same hotel um you know swapping whatever you know know, farm gunk they have on their bodies with each other you don't think that's going to happen again i keep thinking of the caverns i just keep saying farm gunk i know (laughs) i know what you're saying but i keep thinking of the caverns where people have done it the drive-in things where people have done it so Maybe there's something unique and special about these that, that we're not, that I'm not thinking of or aware of. I'm with, I'm with you. I mean, for me, Bonnaroo is the camping and the hanging out with friends and the, mm-hmm. the whole experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not about 90 minutes of an act. Mm-hmm. So, Taco, you're literally in a camper can uh, i mean i'm literally in a camper could could you could you sleep the night there if you parked could you just like hang out for the whole night i don't know i don't know if if they're going to make everybody leave afterwards or you know if if you do stay overnight you know yeah i don't remember if it says there's camping in that area or not no there's not there's not they they just have parking yeah all right so uh would you go Uh, barry's not gonna go uh it's just too he doesn't do things at night but taco (laughs) would you go I don't think so. Not with no camping. I, I don't see so myself going there. Fascinating. You know? what, about the, uh, what about the other lineups? Anything else that pops out at you, know, all the other lineups that came out in the last uh, 10 days or so? You mean about that or about any of the others? Any of the other oh, lineups? I wanna, while we're on, still on it, uh, just oh, because yeah. it's come up, uh, and it, again, it's, it's way inside baseball stuff, but it is important. On August or April 6th, rather, I think the council up there will uh, hear – public opinion on whether to annex the farm or not well that's i wanted to get into that so separately because i am totally confused about this okay uh i'm gonna openly say i don't even know what annexation means (laughs) i have no idea what this is supposed to be so can you explain this to me take me to school and start from the very beginning and explain what it is that they're trying to accomplish sure I can, and I will give uh, a lot of credit to uh, Daniel at the uh, uh, Rubus because he had one of the aldermen on, uh, Ryan, and forgive me, Ryan, I can't think of your last name. Um, but annexation means you become part of the city, which means you get part of the city's benefits. Typically, that means street lights, uh, garbage pickup, sewer, plumbing, those sorts of things. Um, since the beginning... Uh, AC and Ashley Caps and I have been thought, you know, I joke about it. I've written about them planting grass and trees more than I ever would have imagined, but it's important. Uh, they added the sewer. That's important. The reality mm-hmm. is Manchester is not equipped to handle 110,000 people all of a sudden flushing toilets. Mm-hmm. As we talked about earlier, the roads in and out are not equipped to handle 110,000 people. That's why you have the 18-hour waits Mm -hmm. for some people. If they annex, they likely will widen that road. Uh, They will likely hook up to full sewer 
water, some lighting, some roads. Okay, but can, um, can I stop you here? They sure. already have that. No, not the widening of, widening of the roads. I know, but the, but they already have. They've already made, uh, built the water lines. They've already built the sewer lines. Yeah, but Manchester, the county, is not equipped. So it's basically you've got a, a park that has it, and then it funnels down into you know a funnel. It gets funneled, and then it's not able to handle. So that's why you only have the two or three bathroom shower facilities, not full. Um, it so current so currently. A, a farm that is privately owned in the city of Coffee Manchester. County. It's actually Coffee County is the real. Okay. That doesn't Everyone necessar- says it's in Manchester. It's not. It's in Coffee County. Okay. But, but, but if, if it was just a private citizen, would they have to go through all this process too? To get a road? The to cities get rarely annex private cities, citizens, no. And in in a lot of cases, annexation has a lot of. I mean, that would be like whatever small city is near you. It'd be like the big city going out and grabbing it. Sure. A lot of people don't want it. They don't. That's the reason they live where they live. They don't want to be part of your big city. It's, sure. In most cases, it's a tax. Some would argue it's a tax grab mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. But it does come with sewer rather than septic it comes with garbage pickup things like that garbage pickups another big one uh, you know things like this like i said are inside baseball yeah and you don't think of them unless you're the guy that has to haul that garbage off but but i thought that i thought that bonnaroo had uh an agreement that these things were sort of covered and paid for anyway in some ways they compost a lot and they've done a lot but this gets them all the other things that being part of a city municipality would get you. Now it's just so strange because it, they already are in the city. They're not. They're in the they're county. They're not. No, they're in the county. That's what I said two minutes ago. They're not so, in Manchester. It's Coffee County. Okay. So they only have so, county. So this amenities. is where the confusion is for me because they're actually not in Manchester. Correct. No. Uh-huh. They are not. Okay. They're very close, but they're not okay. inside the city proper, so they don't get city Okay. So, so, now, so now I understand where at least my confusion was. This is actually, for the first time in 15 years, I'm finding out that it's actually not even in Manchester. No. No. Never has been. Okay. It always gets put on the date line and all that. And uh-huh. In fact, uh, the, the uh, alderman mentions that. Everybody thinks it's Manchester, but it's not. I didn't know that. And so one of the questions... Look, uh, I go by street signs. If the sign says Manchester with yeah. the arrow to get me off the interstate, I'm in Manchester. Yeah. I mean, and I recommend going and listening. I don't want to take too much... I don't want to take anything away from Daniel and his podcast because it was really good. It was fascinating. Uh, but some of the, you know, questions, will, will there be an issue then with... Uh, did, will they have to quit early? Because they have to follow city guidelines. And... Basically, he said, no, we know what they do. They're not going to ask to be annexed and, and have to we change. Know. We know what they do. <laughs> yeah. So. All right. Interesting. All right. It's very interesting. I mean, yeah, it, I, yeah, I, way I inside no idea. baseball, but it's important. No, it is important. Look, I mean, the reason why this podcast started in the, to begin with is because um, I looked down and I saw power lines. You know, when we, yeah. when we walk to and from our camp, we look down and we see... You know, these, these just forever long power lines and tubes that, you know, power lines are inside of and they run along the side of the, the roads back there. And it hit me. Oh, my God, they've got to create power somehow. And That's they've it. got to imagine. And I kept I was obsessed that one weekend of how much cable, like how many yeah. like feet of cable do you think they have just here? I yeah. mean, just millions and millions of feet of cable. And then I, that's when we just started nerding out on the weird, small, tiny little things about this, this little city that was created. And that was the, the birth of the, this dumb show. Yeah. Yeah. Ross, you've noticed that too, is right? I mean, you get there and uh, you get there and you can't believe how massive it is. And Yeah. It, it's a farm. And so they, everything, they have to b- bring it in. There's, no, there's nothing there except just land. So they had to get all the power and... Uh, facilities and all that. I think the only permanent structure is the wet stage, right? All of yeah. the others they build. Mm-hmm. They well, see, that's two weeks that's, before. That it just. Keep, I think I'm going to think about this conversation with the booking agents, especially Allie. When Allie said last 
show that you know it so, feels so much easier for a city festival to come back. And by the way, I knew about the Lollapalooza thing when we talked about the booking agents. I was trying to lead her into that path of, of you know, <laughs> trying to say this information so that I didn't have to. But, um, you know, she was saying how, yes, yeah, city festivals are going to come back a lot easier than a camping festival like Bonnaroo because cities have all these things that are already, you know, ready to go. Right. Uh, hotels, especially. Uh, it's pretty easy to get somebody into a hotel a lot harder to get them into a a campsite when the cdc is saying you know camping not the best idea um but yeah she didn't take the bait on that unfortunately but Um, yeah so you know that's that's what i that's what i have this week do we have anything else i think that was it Um, okay all right no i think that's it okay by the way new patreon tiers coming right we've got uh yes new patreon tiers we're gonna get those tiers up yeah, so uh, we've got new gear. Oh, I'm mm-hmm. so excited about the new gear. So yeah. excited ex- to announce the new gear coming with the uh, Patreon levels. This yeah, we is have big be very, plans. very exciting. We have yeah. big plans, and I guess we should say if if these uh, lineups uh, drop as we predict, we'll be back sooner than later, right? Yeah, we might have a late night in store for us pretty soon, huh? Yeah, hope so. Yeah, if if. If you see, I don't know, us online on Twitter, say, Monday night around midnight, uh, you probably know something's up. <laughs> you probably know something's up, because we're probably doing a show and uh, reading a lineup. Yeah, if you see uh, anything from Barry JC on Twitter after, say, 6.30 at night. 6.30 p.m., yeah, when something's <laughs> going on. That's right. Yeah, I something's can't believe right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, quick one today. Promise you that. Uh, that's Lord Taco with Barry. I'm Brad. We'll talk to you next time on the What Podcast. Love you, bye. Hey, 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 hey. How y'all feeling? Journey through the stories that define the artists playing Bonnaroo. Who are they? What are they? What will you see? The what? Which bands? This year? That matter. Yay. With Brad Steiner and Barry Corder.